calorie restriction. The first approach that I'm gonna talk about over the next four days, which has a little bit more structure, a bit more of a set approach to it than yesterday's intuitive eating, is that of calorie restriction. Uh, and I was tempted to use a different word, but let's be honest, however we choose to phrase it in a way that works better for us, what we're ultimately looking to do, if weight loss is our intent, is to change that calorie balance. And it may be that we look to use more calories by being more active, exercising more, etc., or we may look to consume less. And therefore it is, to, re to a degree, a restriction. And it's worth remembering that any successful weight loss approach has to be underpinned by that calorie reduction. Whatever method we use, intuitive eating, something more time-based, different coloured days, points, etc., will only work if it creates a calorie deficit, if weight loss is our goal. Time and time again, under controlled laboratory situations, all the different weight loss methods you'll have heard of, that your, your mates, tennis partners, cousins, friend, lost 10 stone on, they all work, give or take a tiny percentage of variance to exactly the same degree and at the same speed when energy matched. So when energy in versus energy out is controlled to plus or minus 20 calories a day, which it can be in a laboratory, then all the different ways of, of dieting, of eating differently, of, of changing your eating that you may have heard of or tried, all perform within about a percent of each other when calorie matched. And that's why the main method we recommend is tracking. I don't like to think of it as calorie counting, but, but yeah, it is. Because I wouldn't feel comfortable recommending a method to you that may or may not work. I can only feel comfortable recommending a method that will 100% definitely work if done properly. Because then if it's not working, it's relatively easy to identify the changes we can make. If I were to recommend some other thing about timings of meals, of, of different food groups we may or may not eliminate, or, of any other way of eating that would only work if you created a deficit, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable that that was the best advice to give you. So, easiest way to lose weight, from my experience, is to track our food. The insight we get from that, we can take forward. We can then use it to create different rule-based approaches. We may use it as the foundation for intuitive eating, but we can only be intuitive with something if we kind of know what's going on. We can't just fundamentally guess and hope for the best. If we know what certain portion sizes might look like for certain foods, the impact of certain choices versus other ones, then we can potentially be a bit more intuitive going forward. But I guarantee, out of all the things you could possibly do, if weight loss and really improving your eating at all is your goal, spending two to three minutes per meal for a week tracking your food with an app like MyFitnessPal will give you by far the highest return on investment of anything you can do. It's the same amount of total time as a single workout, but spread across the week. It doesn't require you going anywhere else. doesn't require you getting sweaty and needing a shower afterwards. It just requires two or three minutes inputting something into an app. Look on the Learn tab on our app if you're not sure how to use it or ask a coach next time you're down. And I guarantee that time and effort will be the most rewarding and highest return on investment out of anything you could do.